Guys, welcome to the podcast, The Roman Atwood Cod. Uh, what was that? Podcast? The Roman, <laughs> the Roman <laughs> Atwood Codcast. Cod it's a show about fishing with, where we catch cod. We were one, one of the greatest fishermen on the West Coast. Brittany Atwood, my beautiful wife, and listen, the man of the hour. Mm. I, the, nobody knows this, but today we did not have a podcast. We did not have, in fact, we're here in LA. This is our last day here, and we had a, a big opportunity that fell through. Dude, when you told me that, you were like, man, we, we were supposed to, can I say? Uh, All right, I, I, I'll, I'll say it, just bleep it's it. It's a big guess. Just bleep it. You were like, we were supposed to have Tony Hawk on. Yeah. And then you said, but like he had a family emergency, so now we're having you. I was like, dude, if your audience knows <laughs> who you were supposed to have and now you have me, they're going to be so let down. Bro. Yeah, maybe we leave the audio in. I yeah. Think, I, think, I think it makes sense. <laughs> Dude, you saved us today, so thank Always, you. Always, bro. First of course, of man. And I know you're used to the big leagues, man. You're you're up there for the podcast mm-hmm. stuff for sure. But I mean, I, as I said when we when I got here, dude, like you're a triple OG of YouTube. I mean, if 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 you're a YouTuber out there that doesn't look at that, would family with the utmost respect and just grateful, you know, gratitude for what you guys did, paving the way in the space, then you're doing it wrong, you know. And like you guys, <laughs> you know, just built everything as far as it pertains to you know vlogging and and youtube content so like dude i'll always have a a, a soft spot for you because i think you guys helped helped it happen for all of us thank you you, man Uh, yeah i don't know yeah that's very nice thank you it's funny when i met you for for the first time i was obviously big on youtube massive and now you're sitting here as the big one on youtube bro you know strangely as like one of the last in the vlogging space. The vlogging space is, and you know, it's so awesome to be able to sit here with, with you know, someone who, who you know built the space. But you, you've seen it kind of like vlogging kind of lose its allure a little bit and and more so lose its propulsion from YouTube as a platform. I sure. mean, there was a time where vlogging was. Everything. It, it was, was the all, algorithm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you were creating a vlog and showing your daily life, you were getting pushed to the top of the algo mm-hmm. and everybody was watching it. Well, that as, you know, as we've watched it kind of not be the case anymore, that's, it's just not right. Yep. And so you've seen a lot of people, the Emma Chamberlain's and, and, you know, obviously Dobrik and stuff like that, maybe for various reasons there, but like you've seen a lot of the, the people that were the, the cream of the vlog crop kind of stopped producing. And so being one of the last remaining, you know, and I know you guys are still churning out, uh, content, I mean, we dabble in it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, putting out that, that weekly content and, um, it, dude, it's a grind, man. It's hard. It's a, it, 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 even, even like you guys were daily for yeah. how, how, how long? Almost, I think about six years. <laughs> yeah. Almost That's daily. Just yeah. Insane. Dude, dude. it's disgusting. It's insane. Cause I look at like my, my episodes are on the night shift at least are, are a little bit different. So like I'll, I'll look at a, um, a, a daily creator or somebody that creates like maybe even buy or three time uh, a week content. And it's much more like fluid, like longer format. They'll shoot for like an hour in one room, maybe take 20 minutes from it. The reason why it's hard for me sometimes uh, for my stuff that's only weekly is because I'll shoot in like three or four different countries for mm. one episode, like multiple <laughs> yeah. cities, multiple different, you know, f- format situations, burger reviews, this person, yeah. that person, flights here, flights there, and then just pull from four hours hours of footage for a, for a 15 minute vlog, you know? So it's a much different kind of format. So there's still a lot of difficulty in it and, and, and it, it takes a lot out of you, you know? Yeah. You're building a, you're building a long form, short form video. Yeah. It's like, it's nonstop. I, dude, I've watched them. They're great. Thank They're fantastic. And, and you stand out with what you're doing. Right. Like, dude, it's so hard to stand out now. Like, you know, it's so hard to stand it, out. It is. I think, I think with me and like you, you mentioned it, um, when I, when I got here or like even just a couple of minutes ago, you're like, dude, before you came today, like I was kind of like starting to get kind of like downtrodden a little tired, 100%. had a headache. You showed up and like the whole vibe changed. Yeah, dude, right? I was like, I love your energy. The, the euphoria around you, bro, just makes us come to life. Right. Every and time I'm around you, I'm like, I feel better around Mike. That's, and yeah. that's what I like want to deliver back to like the love audience, love the it. internet and like the world as a whole. Like that's my main goal is to just make people feel better, yeah. smile more yeah, a little bit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And just like- Which is why we probably attract. A hundred percent. And why yeah. we've always been friends and talked to each other. And like, I think that's like, that's my main goal. And and that's what I think my, um, my selling point has always been as a creator is the ability to, to just make people kind of like forget about their day and, and either be laughing with what I'm doing, be mad at what I'm doing, <laughs> but in some way be enthralled. And I think that's like, that's like the obstacle that 
you're seeing with a lot of creators who aren't able to create longevity for themselves to, to, to be an entertainer, a, a, a long-term entertainer, you have to be entertaining. Yeah. And the internet and social media has allowed people to become relevant for so many different reasons that I think long-term, a lot of them start to find problems with that. When I first started vlogging, you know, uh, it was, oh, he's hot right now because of Logan. Okay. And then yeah. that kind of died down. And then he's hot right now because of Lana. And then we broke up and that kind of died down. And now they're just looking at me. They're like, damn, it's just him now. It's like, all right, I guess we're going to have to like. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? That's true, like, man. Yeah. Um, before we get too deep. Yeah, of course. Britt, you, had, you wanted to ask Mike how he got his name, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> She said, why is he called Big Mike? Dude. Because honestly, you're not, like, if you were seven foot, I'd be like, yeah. well, because he's tall. I was really hyper earlier saying <laughs> some really random said, well, stuff. We'll ask him. We'll ask him. There's so, a lot of different. I don't remember what I said. <clears throat> Big Mike, because listen, you'll always be. Love sack, Love sack Mike. Mike. I know. You it's know still that, in my phone. Right. And I told you, you like, don't ever change it. Yeah, because yeah. That's, the, mm. that's the case with, like, every creator in Los Angeles. Yeah. They all have me in as Mike Lovesack. So. Yeah, real quick, there's a vlog of it. I met you for the first time, Travis Pastrana's house. Yeah. And you actually you actually coordinated that. The whole You're thing. Like, you want to yeah. go to Travis's? We're going to film the phone pit with Love Sacks. He was he was hustling Love Sacks, man. Big time. And and they were dope. We got them in our house and they were we loved them. But that was where we met. And you were just this guy selling Love Sacks. I'm like, why am I at Travis Pastrana's right now? And it was the greatest day. Yeah, it was so sick. But That's how I met Logan, too. Yeah, dude, how crazy. It's nuts, That dude. was a powerful day right there. I know. And, and I mean, I just through Love Sack in general, I mean, I owe uh, Sean Nelson so much just gratitude and thanks and respect for, for giving me the opportunity to have that position. I was this, you know, really rough around the edges kid from the streets that – had no real classical training and marketing or anything like that. And he took a chance on me and saw uh, someone that had a potential to be something more than what they were given, you know, and I'll owe Sean Nelson, you know, a, a debt for forever. But I tried my best to pay that debt while I was at Love Sack and I was yeah. always hustling. And originally I met Logan through just a happenstance text from an agency, you know, Logan Paul's Crazy, this man. influencer, this is 2015. So like they use that term and I was like, what the freak does that mean? Yeah. Uh, is looking to get his hands on a couple of Love Sacks and you know, the story is pretty <laughs> well known, but he, he got my number, he texted me and he was like, um, you know, I'm sitting at the desk in Sanford, Connecticut, like you know, on the, on the laptop, trying to be the best like corporate employee that I can be. Like I have my button up shirt on, like trying to make believe like I'm not like some felon, you know, <laughs> like yeah. or whatever at the time. And, uh, he, he, uh, Logan texted me. He's like, his opening text was, yo, what's the deal with these love sacks, man? Can you fuck on them? <laughs> and That's I was just, started? yeah. And that was like the first text he sent me. And I was like, Okay, you like, can, right? it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, Britt's like, that's actually how our last child was conceived. <laughs> you can make babies on them. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what to say because I was, uh, I was still trying to straddle this line between, you know, really trying to to show people that I was reformed and that right. I was like a better person and that I wasn't going to mess up given an opportunity. But I also was who I am now, which is like this kind of spunky like yeah. person. So I, you know, I had to make a decision in real time, and I just shot and I said. um, yeah, actually, the covers are machine washable, so if you get cum on them, it'll wash right off. And he laughed so hard at that, like, via text message. It was like a like, business response. Co co well, he expected it to be, like, some marketing thing, like, yeah. well, if you turn to page 44 of the warranty, you'll find washing instructions. Like, and I just, I sent that out to him and that was like the first time, like me and him kind of clicked. It's awesome. And now you look at like six years of like potentially one of the greatest duos in, in internet history of just building Facts. shows and vlogs and businesses and all these things. And it's just wild that it all kind of started from this, this text message. Dude, that's unbelievable. That whole day was just so good. Yeah. And, and, and Travis's had, house. Yeah. yeah. And then we've always just somehow stayed in touch here and there and it's beautiful. Yeah, Watching, it's been, you know, you know, I've watched Logan grow and have, we've supported it any way we can any you know i don't know if it was his first video or not but he came to my house yeah like, i want to i want to do youtube right and like we did it it was just so fun to, to to watch he's actually still the uh fastest person to ever get to a million or 10 million subs on the platform really so he got to a million subscribers they put a graphic out about the about it the other day he got to a million subscribers in 81 days on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the closest behind him is like 140. I think it was Emma. 
but it's just wild. And then he got to 10 million, I think, in the first. I think 10 million was the first 500 or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly what the timeline was. I mean, he was, he was basically doing something that people find – and this is just a testament to him as a creator. He was he was transitioning his audience from one platform yeah, to another, yeah. which when it comes to YouTube is basically impossible. Yeah. I mean, unless you are going to be a YouTube creator and innately understand it from the jump, you won't be able to do that. Like you, you look at all these TikTokers now. Um, and people from other platforms that try to come to YouTube and yep. try their hand at YouTube, yep. and they'll they'll get you know ten thousand views, even though they'll get millions yeah. on TikTok. We we watched that a lot when we were YouTubers, and Vine was trying to transition. Yep, you're right. There was a lot that couldn't do it. Yep, Logan was one that mastered just it. just yeah, crazy. Slaughtered it. So so the name. Um, there's a lot of different <laughs> thought processes around what it means. Yes, I'm six foot three, so yeah. it could be that. Um, I do hang out with some adult stars, so okay. maybe it could be that, right? Yeah. But maybe not. <clears throat> the th I don't know if I've ever told this story on any podcast Perfect. before, but this is actually really funny. So <laughs> in 2012, I was dating this girl back in Connecticut, and she had this friend uh, named Mikey, and he was he was a uh, very like he was like a very flamboyant. Uh, her very flamboyant, like gay friend, Mikey, yeah. right? And he was he was the sweetest kid, super nice, and um, he would always be around at the same time that my girlfriend was around. And they were best friends; they would go everywhere together. And right around that time, Instagram drops. It's like two thousand. I don't remember when it was, like two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, right? Something like that. And mm -hmm. I see this new like burgeoning platform coming out, and you know, I'm like, oh, I, I guess I'm gonna create an account, but I, I couldn't think of the name. So I just kind of like put it on the back burner. Well, at the time I was 285 pounds. So some people know this that read the fifth vital and some people don't, but I used to have a, a, a major battle with my weight when I first had gotten clean. And, um, I was, I was very heavy. So I was six, three and okay. Also yeah. fat to be honest <laughs> with you. Right. And so, um, Mikey, this kid, he had he had kind of coined a name for me, which was Big Mike, because I was Big Mike. Just and every time dude. I'd come around, I was this big dude. But when he said it, when I would show up places, he would say, hey, Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> like every time. And it turned into this like joke in my hometown because people would always be like, hey, Big Mike, like that. So when Instagram started, I was like, dude, this app is meaningless. Like, no one's ever going to use this shit. Like, everybody's yeah. on Facebook and MySpace. Like, no crazy? one's going to use this crap <laughs> picture app where you post stupid photos of your freaking fish sandwich. You know what it I'm did saying? start with a lot of food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so Big Mike's really pretty innocent. 100%. So, innocent. I t so I started my Instagram account and called it Hey Big Mike. Hey Big Mike. Hey which Big is Mike. what he used to say to me. And, so, and now it's, yeah. like, kind of a brand, <laughs> which is strange. It really is. Yeah. Like, I, I literally call you Big Mike yeah. for... Mike Lovesack. Love Sack, yeah. yeah, Mike Lovesack. Yeah. Uh, you, you just mentioned your book, right? And this, this, this book has saved lives, 100%. Mm -hmm. Saved human beings. Yeah, a lot. Tell me about it. Um, the Fifth Vital is so many things. I mean, ba I mean in, its, in its simplest form, it's a memoir um, about my battle with drug addiction, which was... Uh, uh, you know, basically a 10 year bout with addiction to, um, opiates, oxycontin, heroin, crack cocaine, um, everything under the sun. Um, and it, also a, a, a document, um, about, about my struggles with mental health and, and, and mental illness, which is something that I continue to battle each and every single day of my life. Um, from the second I wake up until the second I go to bed. Mm. Um, and, uh, I got clean off opiates on June 23rd, 2010, uh, in Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, at SCRC, uh, um, a state funded, you know, detox facility in, in the, the hood in, in New Haven, Connecticut. And, um, after I got clean, maybe a couple years after I got clean, I started writing mm. and I wanted to document the hellish experience that I went through. Which was, I mean, it, it you know, for for people who haven't read the book, just just ripe with some of the most destructive stories that you could ever hear and probably wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, just 
massive, you know, car accidents and overdoses and losing friends and broken bones and ICUs and handguns and felony charges and um, just basically war, you know, and and um, I wanted to tell the story of what I call in the book the the forgotten, you know, and and this under layer of people who have been disregarded by our society in America, um, fathers, brothers, sisters, uh, loved ones, family members who have fallen victim to big pharma or addiction or lack of mental health, um, you know, resources in this country. And, uh, and so I wrote this book about my story as well as, um, my escape from it and how I got to where I am now. And, um, I, I had hoped that what I, I remember thinking to myself when I, when I was getting near finishing it, I was like, man, if, if, if a hundred people read this story, if 100 people read this story and one of those people says, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to do this. I, there's a chance for me. I've been a, an addict for 15 years, but mm. look at him. Look what he's doing now. Look where he is in his life. If one person says that, my life is complete. I never have to worry to myself any ever again. What do I have to do with my life? How can I, how can I help? How can I make wow. an impact? Yep. And, you know, as of maybe like last week, we're, we're coming up on like 300,000 copies sold. 300,000, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's one of the highest Congrats. ranked books on Amazon and, and Audible. It's almost five out of five stars on both platforms. I mean, thousands and thousands of ratings. I mean, I've met people in every every state, every country in the world that, Beautiful. that have um, used it as a testament to getting clean, understanding their mother's suicide, their father's addiction to heroin, you know, how helping loved ones. Um you know, find a reason to get clean. Yeah. It's in jail systems. It's in rehabilitation centers. I've sent out thousands of copies. I've donated Amazing, thousands man. of copies. Um, and it has allowed me the peace of mind to, to feel like I, I have made a difference and Absolutely. I've climbed a, a mountain that a lot of people look at as like a second mountain, you know, and I kind of climbed it first before finding all of my magnificent success elsewhere. What so. an achievement. I mean, I mean, saving a human life is an achievement, is a blessing, right? Like it's a gift. We lost to- my stepbrother. How many years has it been? Many, a few yeah. years. <clears throat> he ended up uh, killing himself over, over drugs. Yeah, it's Just very, so very hard. And it happens every day all over this world. And uh, I know personally pe- people that that book has helped so much. So thank you for that, man. That's beautiful. It's been a, it's been a, almost like a, um, it's a, it was a relief, but also another pressure yeah. because when you, when you put that story out, it invites a lot of energy back in your direction of people who want to continue talking about it. Mm. And it's something that I've struggled with. The the one thing I will say is I, I and I, I'm very, one thing I'm, I'm learning to do through therapy is to not be so hard on myself. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very hard on myself, like very, and I want to help everyone. And so when someone messages me, you know, today's the day, I, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I don't want to be here anymore, which is every single day of my life. I stop everything that I'm doing. My day comes, grinds to a halt, and now I'm having a one-on-one conversation with that person for three hours. And my team is like, dude, like, this is not okay. Like, you, you, this is not your burden. You cannot try to save everybody. You're not going to be able to do that. Um, and so it's, it's, um, it's, just really, it's just really challenging and really um, upsetting, and it's something that will always kind of stick with me is, is – knowing that there are so many people out there who need help and can't get it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and honestly, like even in the, in the current place that I'm in and I'm so blessed and, and, and have had the opportunity to do so much, I still struggle at times to find the help that I need. Mm. And I am a millionaire with some of the best contacts and connections on this planet. Mm. And, and what that tells me is that there's someone out there under a bridge right now who can't, doesn't even know where to start looking for some sort of assistance when, when it comes to, to, to men, their mental illness or their substance abuse problem. And they have no one. I have the, one of the greatest families, greatest mm. background, uh, backbones of, of network. 
And it, it always hurts me when I think about the people that are out there that have no one. And there's so many people in this country is so broken. Um, and, and our, our, our mental, uh, health resources are so broken. It's just really sad. And so that was kind of like my, my, my first step in giving back to the community, um, that I had definitely wronged and had definitely done some, some dirt in the past a lot. And, and it was, you know, a step to recovery for me in, in that sense and, and, and making an impact. But now I'm trying to continue that with, um, building real infrastructure for mental health resources and substance abuse. And that takes time. It does take time. Yeah. Think of how much you've done in, in a very short time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A very short time. It's been, a, yeah, it's been quick. Yeah, for sure. I know we've dealt with through our career, the, uh, you know, not, not, not the same issues, but a lot of, dude, I'm not going to make it another day. I'm not going to uh, let, I actually quit reading fan mail because yeah. it, it became so hard mm-hmm. for me to open the letter. Heavy. It was so heavy. It was so hard. It would actually like shut me down for the day. We stopped reading fan mail. We had, close I don't know, PO box. had to close yeah. the PO box. It got so intense um, that I just tried to continue doing it through the videos. It was yeah, like yeah. on screen. I give them all the love I can and, and happiness and joy. And uh, it's it's crazy. You get hate for that. You get hate for trying to help people. Yeah, you know, my, <laughs> I've, been, I've been pretty lucky because the one thing that I have, and it's a struggle that I have to continue to, like, deal with because – I sometimes want to like talk about food or, or like hang out with hot chicks or like just, you know, do the WWE and like the fun stuff. The thing that I have that a lot of, I mean, damn dude, like very few people have almost no one is like, I have automatic credibility Mm. when it, as it pertains to positive storytelling and reinforcement. When I talk in a positive sense, people know what I had to go through to get to the minute where I was able to deliver that message. Mm -hmm. So it is so authentic and real that it's, it's immediately believable. Does that, does that make sense? It's, it's, there are so many gurus out there, so many, uh, Um, mental health advocates and, and I'm not going to, you know, discount the fact that we all struggle. So like, I I get that people want to talk about it, but like, when, when, when people see me, they see someone that they know yeah. had to crawl and, yeah. and, and claw for every inch, dude, for years and years and years. And still to this day, to this mm-hmm. day, how many mm-hmm. podcasts they've seen me sit on and start sweating and have to run off set because I was having a panic mm-hmm. attack or, or days when that I couldn't even make it to set because I, I was so depressed and I didn't want to get out of bed. So like my, my audience knows that they know what I've been through. So like when I deliver my message, I ge- it's generally received pretty well, which which actually is I- I'm grateful for because yeah. I know there's a lot of other people who want to infuse good into the world, but they're scared to because they yeah. know they're going to get like shit on for it. Yeah, you know. Well, you're a real survivor. There's no denying it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you want to listen to a survivor, right? If I want to hear a good war story. Hearing somebody that went through the war is who I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. It's <laughs> like sure. it's authentic. It's real. Right. Not there's like no a denying. historian. Yeah. It's not a guy that thinks he knows about <laughs> right, the war. Right. It's really the guy. Uh, yeah. So I love that. And, and you're such an example, not only on that end, but the example of uh, rags to riches or zero to hero. You have, you've done so much uh, from being broke to being a millionaire. Yeah. Like you are such an example for all these people struggling, you know? And, it's shocking and, and all In all walks of the world, like you said, we're all struggling. Yeah, Every single absolutely. person in this room has their own battle. Mm-hmm. And and no matter where you hit in life, you're always going to have a battle. That's that's life, right? Yep. I think. No, no, 100%. And, you, have and a mil- you have millions of dollars, you're still battling. Yeah, for it's sure. Just, yeah. I mean, whether it's the <laughs> fact that someone's trying to take 53% of it from you, like, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or you know, it, mm-hmm. it, there's always... And and for me, it's it's still the same battles. I mean, I, I've been a little bit irresponsible with taking care of myself. I uh, I am an addict in in all steps of life, and so that can lead to um, addiction to work. It can lead to addiction to money. It can lead to addiction to anything. And yeah. um, I have done a not the best job um, taking care of myself. Mm. You know, I, I my my physical health my mental health, especially, um, you know, and, and this year specifically was supposed to be the year where I started to really tackle the mental side. And I've still been just doing a bad job. It's always more physical. Like you're working out. I'm going to say you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm in the gym five days a week at dog pound. Um, they're kicking my ass. It's been great. My, you know, I've, 
I've been I've I've been in the gym for a long time. I I attribute a lot of my ability to get out of um to, to, to honestly to survive to to still surviving um on this planet to to physical activity. Yes. I I, I can't even begin to you know, urge the audience and the listeners to this, to this program to, to, to find something that makes them excited about getting active. Um, I spent the, you know, nine, nine or so years, uh, as an addict completely, um, you know, stagnant and, 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 you know, the, the destruction that that led to on my body in terms of weight gain, uh, atrophy of muscles and, and just body mass, you know, mm -hmm. changes have, have continued to stay with me to this day, but more than anything else, I mean, that stagnation leads to the stagnation of the mind. And the thing that actually got me out of, um, a, mentally out of a bad spot, even after I'd gotten clean was cycling. Riding bikes. Yeah. Riding Heck bikes. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big, um, road cyclist and, and road bike advocate. Um, and there's something about that constant uh, spinning mm. of the crank and wheels and, you know, the, the need to just, I think anytime your body's doing this, your mind is not. Mm. And anytime yeah. your body's doing this, your mind is doing this. Does that make sense? Very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. so if you can find something that puts your body into even a robotic or, or motorized movement for extended periods of time to a point where you're sweating, yeah. you'll notice this starts to free up quite a bit. 90%. Yeah, 100%. even lifting weights, yeah. it's just amazing. There's somebody who's like, oh, I just feel like crap. Go to the gym and I like kill myself and I'm like, I feel so much better. Is that better. crazy? That's yeah, was, just what I needed. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna touch on exactly what you just said. I've never thought of that. 100% of my anxiety is always when I'm sitting still. Every time, it's usually in the middle of the night. I gotta get up out of bed. I gotta start moving to snap yep. out of it. Exactly what you just said. Like sitting is, is dangerous. It's dangerous. So it's something that I've had, to, that I've struggled with too because- I prefer the reason why I, I have done so many vlogs is because I prefer to act slash entertain while moving. Mm. And when you're vlogging, you're moving. You, I could run across the yeah. room while yeah. well talking. Mm -hmm. It does better when you're moving. Yeah, and so and so I I still have am mastering the idea of sitting in one place and getting my mind also to a place where I can entertain at the highest level. Mm. And I, and, and this, I, I think, you know, a lot of people always tell me, they're like, dude, like, what are you talking about? Like, we watch you, you do this all the time. Yeah, right? You do this for a living. Well, you're good at it. Either I'm just way. hard yeah. on myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, can, can you, can you, um, if I have a call with any business, I'm pay, I'm walking, I'm pacing. Circles. Yeah, I cannot, I no can't shot. physically sit. And can't walk. do it. Can't yeah, do it's it. Weird, so right? imagine then the fact that you're then going to go and sit and do a podcast yeah. for two hours, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. You know, but if I, so it's, it's, it's really strange. And honestly, like within, within, you know, 40 episodes of Impulsive, I had the agencies, you know, managers, brands, everybody under the sun saying like, when does your podcast drop? Like, this is your space, dude. Like, what are you doing? What's, what's, what's the holdup, dude? Like you can talk, your shows would be six hours long. You get <laughs> along with every single yeah, guest on the show. Sure. They're constantly locked in with you. Absolutely. Like you have a rapport with everybody. Your networking skills are incredible. Where's your podcast? And it's, it's, it hurts to say that I, that I still, I, 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 I still struggle a lot with, with, my belief in myself mm -hmm. Interesting. and that sucks, bro. Like that really sucks. That's it crazy. really sucks that we're so self limiting mm. as humans. And, and there's a lot of people out there that, and I'm sure there's some level of it that ties back to like my comfort level and the fact that I make a ton of money off vlogs and like, I like doing that. Right. It's a ton of fun. So maybe some yeah. of it's laziness or, or just, I'm like, well, I got a good thing over comfortable. here. Comfortable, yeah. whatever. That's yeah. the term. Yeah. But but it, it it sucks to imagine that there's a lot of people out there who have such a gift in life and are just limited by their beliefs of what yeah. they either can do or feel uncomfortable doing so they won't do. Yeah. I mean, that's some of the stuff I push constantly is just you got to start. You got to try it. Yeah. Got to start it. All my struggles come from sitting still. Uh, it really does, man. You right. just got to move. Yeah, Keep 100%. moving, yeah. bro. It's like... 
if you look at a, if you look at a body of water that's not moving, it rots. It's yeah. stagnant. There's moss. It grows. Yeah, it turns stuff. into a uh, a swamp. Right. Right. But a river is usually beautiful and clear and rushing, and it's just something about it, dude. That's like, like one of the things that I always say too is like that. That's such important advice, dude. Yeah. Like in all aspects of life, is just like keep moving always. It and sounds cliche, right? But it's. Like we doing it, so right. we know it's true. But but it's funny because it, it it's important in certain aspects of life, but then the opposite is important in other aspects of life. So like for example, as far as career is concerned, every elderly person that I look at, the day they retire, their clock starts ticking towards death mm. immediately. Yeah. The day they retire, the day they say, this is my last day in the office, you can almost start the clock because their brain, their body, all of it's not, that now they're in the chair in the day, they're watching Jeopardy mm. at seven. And you watch that clock, watch that happen with both of my grandparents, dude. Like literally the day they, re the day they retire, right? So career-wise, as you just said, and like, you know, for, for continued self-evolution, you want to keep moving. Mm -hmm. You want to always be moving, always be evolving. But a place that I've had a ton of trouble is when it comes to things like relationships with women, relationships with family, relationship with friends. Those are the things that you want to not have move as much. <laughs> okay, and yeah. you want to find peace yeah. and you want to find longevity yeah. in. And so my ADHD overactive anxious mind doesn't know how to pump the brakes on mm. things like that. And so now you see a 38 year old who unfortunately, you know, isn't very good at, at managing romantic relationships. Yeah. Well, you're moving fast. Yeah. Moving fast. Yeah. You try to catch a fish in a river, bro. <laughs> it's hard. It's moving, it's bro. Hard. It's, it's hard. moving. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and I ain't the best fisherman, dude. So no stable relationships. <laughs> nah. Nothing right now? Nah. I, um. But I mean, I mean, look at you. You're, you're in different, like you just said, you're in three different countries. And, and on one week. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that'd be hard for anybody. It yeah. is. It is. But I also, mm. I, I think, I think that, and it, and it really is just sad that I, I'm, you know, have been talking about this on shows for years. I think I am a victim of, of um, my beliefs in my, about myself. Hmm. I get into a, I get into a habit of telling myself certain things and they, and those, and, and honestly, it just is really an important lesson too, is like, be careful how you talk to yourself. Yeah, man. Really be careful yeah. about how you talk to yourself because the scary thing is you don't even notice that the things that you're saying to yourself are becoming habitual and are becoming part of you. Mm -hmm. And there was some point, you know, years back, I was a relationship guy my whole life. Mm. I mean, I was in relationships. I was in five-year relationships, three-year relationships my whole life. And then at some point in my mid twenties, after I got clean, I, I got into this habit of telling myself, Oh, you're not good at relationships. Hmm. You're not good at relationships. You don't have access to those feelings. And I found myself, you know, over the past five years, just completely void of any kind of emotional attachment to, wow. to the opposite sex. I mean, I mean, there's just never a time when I feel any kind of, you know, love or, or emotional attachment to anyone else, you know, and wow. it's, it's, a, it is a, it's something I'm working on. You know, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I don't, I don't, um, ever give up, you yeah. know, yeah. I talk bad to myself, but I'm not a, I'm not a quitter, you yeah. know, you so I'm working on to Ohio. Yeah. I feel like that would help. There. You're a good yeah. Ohio girl. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't imagine meeting somebody out here anyway. It's just a different world. It's a different yeah. scene. And I think that actually adds to it as well, because it's like a lot of the, a lot of like the sex is so transactional that. I was just talking about this with another big creator who has a similar issue. A lot of the sex is so transactional, especially like at, in the way that, that I do, which is recreational and very playful and like almost like content on its own. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, whereas unless you pull yourself out of that type of interaction, you can't access any kind of uh, emotional connection because you're so used to, Oh, that one's good today. That's good to actually, you know, let's do both today. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it, it sounds like fun and it is fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If that's the type of well, person I, you I, are. I, I, we, we were with you not long ago in Tennessee 
And I, I just never seen anything like it. I, I've, I've said this many times. I've never been hit on in my life. Never. We're buying burgers. And this girl <laughs> oh, yeah. just comes out of nowhere, hands Mike her number. What are you doing tonight? Let me know yeah. about the burger review when I've, it comes up or something. It, i never seen anything like that. Yeah, it's honestly, it's been uh, How do they know? How do they know? Because you'd have to be putting off that energy. That's exactly what it is. Because I have never. That's exactly ever. what it is. And, and so we talked about it in the beginning of the show. If you, and 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 it's funny because a lot of guys always ask me. They're like, "Dude, like write a book about picking up girls. Like you, you are the best at it. Like in the world. And it's not even. And that's the thing. Like I always explain back to them. Like it's not picking up girls. If you if you do what you should do. If that's your goal. Which by the way, like I'm trying to move out of that space. Like I said. <laughs> but if that's your goal, any kind of proactive approach on your part should be unnecessary. You should just be walking into a burger shop. Yeah. giving off all of the proper signs and it wow. should be attracted to you. Yeah. You know, and that's so what I'm worried about. I don't know if you noticed, but I sat in between you two <laughs> stop, today, stop, bro. Stop, stop. <laughs> I'm not taking no risks with this guy, bro. <laughs> no, but, but no, but honestly, like they always ask me like, what is it that girls want? Like, what is it that, that they desire? And it's not a, it's not a height. This is not, none of this stuff is like, that, maybe that helps whatever. But like, this is not stuff that I've like come into over the past five years. This has been my life since I was 15 uh, years old, wow. right? It is simply an inexplainable energy of positivity. I, I, I truly believe that. There's a Cyndi Lauper song. Girls just want to have fun. They really do. Girls want to have a good time. They want to feel comfortable. They want to feel appreciated and respected. And they want to laugh. Yeah. And and if you can, and, and you know, of course there's like a bunch of like little add-ons. They're generally hungry near the end of the night. If you buy a mozzarella yeah. sticks for a girl, she'll probably be pretty happy with that and we'll go on a date with you, right? A couple million's not bad either. No, and of course, yeah, 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 yeah. But but at 15, you didn't have that. Didn't, but also <laughs> I will say this, the couple million, the house, the flowers, yeah. a lot of that type of shit attracts the wrong girls yeah. too. So that's been like another trick, uh, uh, tr trouble that I've had. But yeah, I mean, I think it, a lot of it is just like having that kind of like larger than life energy where you can walk into a room mm -hmm. and people are just kind of like, who's that guy? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I live off of. I think, that you, is my with, I think you have a lot of confidence too. Like we, yeah, for sure. You're going to buy a burger. You're going to buy a burger. You're not looking, you're not even looking at her. Why? Well, and you I know, think I, that helps. I, so she was sitting there and she heard <laughs> me like talking to them about the burgers and then like, just like, I, I think like I said, like some sort of like really quick, like cutesy comment to her. Like that was just in passing. And that's yeah. another thing that like, I always tell guys is like, like it's in, in initial interactions, maybe not down the line, but in initial interactions, being a try hard is generally not going to be in your favor. So like any kind of like extreme chasing in the first interaction you have with a girl. Now I don't mean that down the line, down the line, you should be fighting for what yeah. you love and what you want. Mm -hmm. And, and that's very important for a woman to see that you care about them and you truly mean what you say. But in an initial interaction, there's a lot of guys out there who just give off a little bit too much, like pick me energy yeah. and girls do not like that. The they just look. don't. Yeah, exactly. So like, a lot of times, like, I'll say something in passing, and then they'll receive it well, and in their mind, they're like, well, where's the follow-up? Like, I like this guy. He's cool. Like, what he said was funny. Like, is he going to—and I don't. <laughs> yeah, and I walk outside moving. with the burgers and do a burger review, so when they come out, if they're interested enough, they might just give me their number. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And then, and then I see— Are what, you learning? <laughs> Are no, you yeah, learning? yeah. Sorry. I'm this taking is notes. This is for the audience. He's not, not teaching for, me. It's for you guys. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I remember you being like— you, you literally like wadded the number up and put it in the bag. I was like, that's how, that's, that's like, dude, like you've I been just, through because, it. cause I will say this too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of places in life where there's a lot of places in life where I will be risque. I will challenge the status quo. I will bend things until they break. One thing I've always been extremely, extremely cautious of is hurting someone from a emotional standpoint, I believe that the, the, um, transaction and the, and the passing of love is the most important, like resource on this planet. And that girl was a real Tennessee girl. And the last thing she needed was a phone call from me, dude. Like, I swear, like, I'm not like, <laughs> Such a good guy. What am I going to do? Text her and be like, yo, you want to hang out tonight? And then I leave the next day What? Yeah. and we hang out. We go to dinner. She's like, oh, he's so cool. Like, you know, like maybe we'll hang out. And no, 
You know what I'm saying? Let yeah. me go back until I get my shit figured out, <laughs> fix myself. And then if it makes sense down the line to a point where like, you're not going to get hurt, then maybe. But like, until then, let me just go play in the cesspool that I currently <laughs> exist in <laughs> until I can escape, you know? Jesus. So what's your like, lo- like five years you want to settle down? No, no, no. I want, no, I want to. I you're want working to. on it right yeah, now. Yeah, I want to. I, I really do want to. I just, I just, damn, it's like. It's you're like, in LA, bro. Yeah, it's just like one of those things where it's like imagine like wanting something, but like you you really do have to put the work in. So so for me to work on that and become a, a an eligible like bachelor like person that like makes sense to be da- dated, I have to turn a couple other burners off. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You so go like, on the bachelor. well, you're moving so fast too. <laughs> like, how do you even connect with somebody? I mean, you're in a. Yeah. You're like, what's the Adam Sandler movie where he just jumps on the jet ski and he's out? Woo. Yeah. Well, and the good thing, yeah. what was it? Was it, was it click? No, it was it? 50 fir- uh, oh, oh, 50 was first it 50 first dates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Cause I am Adam Sandler for the new age. I love it. Yeah. I love that guy. I'm going to meet him eventually. Dude. Bro. Yeah. He's the dream meet for sure. He, I've been like close to like, he, uh, so he's here in LA. Yeah. He's in, um, mm. he's in Brentwood and like, He's got a studio, um, uh, Happy Madison yes. Productions, and that's out there. And I've actually been in contact with them because he is like, he's like a bit of an enigma, right? Like he exists, but like no one truly really understands what's happening because mm-hmm. like he's so rich, but he just wears those giant basketball. I love like it. his swag is I untouchable. It. There's the nobody best. on the planet yeah. that has Adam Sandler swag besides Adam Sandler. But over the past like couple of years, like there's been a lot of these um, groups that have come out where it's like people that look like Adam Sandler, but aren't. Yes. And anytime like that gets posted, I get tagged in it like a thousand times. I, I see it. I hear it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when I, so I did a, um, I did a show not too long ago with Seth Rogen, who's another just go of, yep. of the, of the comedy space. And I'd never met Seth before. And, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to meet so many amazing people yeah. through the yep. podcast and through the content. You know, Mike Tyson and Tony you know, Robbins, Tony Robbins, yeah. all these awesome people that are just so cool. But Seth Rogen to me was like, dude, that's like a real goat, dude. Talk like some him. of his movies are like just incredible, yeah. right? And some of the best ever and just pr- his production value and, and his writing and just everything about him is, is just such a cool vibe. And uh, I walked in there and immediately like where a lot of people would start to like kind of like close off because they're around the presence of greatness. Like I was just still myself. And had him laughing within like the first like five seconds of like talking to him. And, you know, he's doing the (laughs) (laughs) and then he stops and everybody there's like 50 people with cameras all around just pointing at me and him. And he stops and like looks in the direction of the cameras and looks back at me and he goes. Man, you have such an Adam Sandler energy going on. Like, nice. and just started like cracking up because everybody else in the room knew that everybody always like compares me to him looks wise. Obviously, yeah. I have nothing on him in terms of like his comedy, but like, it was just funny because he said it was like kind of like affirming to yeah. that. To that, yeah, it's it's our generation too. Yeah. Anybody asks me who do you want to meet, number one, I'm Dude, saying like, he's Adam Sandler, number one. So yeah. so he so he definitely is was in my like top like. You know, five. A lot of the other ones I've gotten the opportunity to meet. Yeah, I was in Australia last week, and uh, this was so random. Logan was launching Prime in Sydney, and we spent some time in Sydney, some time in Perth, and then they went home. Everybody left. There was like twenty of us there, and everybody left. KSI went home, and it was just me and David, the German, my my videographer, and we continued on into Australia because I wanted to, to explore this beautiful country. Oh, Australia man. is stunning, dude. I had so much fun there, and the people there are so great. And I went to this hotel, the Langham in Gold Coast on the beach. This is random Tuesday. And I go to check in the hotel and I go to get on the elevator. And the elevator door is open. And I turn and Dave Chappelle walks past me oh, with his security guards. And I, I, oddly enough, have had the pleasure of meeting Dave before. Yeah. So he knew who I was. So I turned and I said, Dave? And he said, what are you doing here? And, and you know, in Australia on a Tuesday, I said, bro, I can ask you the same quote. What the <laughs> f- you doing here? So he had a show in, in, in Brisbane that night. And, um, I, I, I went to the show and he invited me backstage after it was just me and a couple of girls and David. 
and we went backstage and we hung out with them for, for, oh my God, you know, maybe two hours backstage, just the five of us. And then I was like, do you want to go get dinner? We have like a restaurant in Brisbane that's staying open for us. And we went, we had dinner Jeez, man. and then went to a club together. I mean, I was with them until probably like three in the morning and got to spend the whole night with them. And, um, it, it in a very small group yeah. and just hang out with Personal. him the whole time and talk to him. He he's um so he's an Ohio boy. Yeah. Obviously he lives in in I'll keep that out, but he's, he still lives in Ohio to this day and is a massive um massive boxing fan. And he's a massive fan of like what Jake and Logan are doing with the sport. Mm. And so that was kind of like the jump off point for me and him, but we got to spend time. We talked about the fifth vital. We talked about addiction Beautiful. and just a lot yeah. of stuff. And he is, Dave is a, is a legendary legend, legendary legend. You're talking, you, yeah, dude, you're spitting all the names that I talk about. It's literally, I just met Dave Chappelle at a Bieber concert and I lost my mind, dude. Crazy. I dragged you too. You didn't want to go. Didn't want to go. And then, uh, Guys like Dave Chappelle's here. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like losing my mind. Yeah, yeah. These are the people I, I have <laughs> most of my influence on my whole career have been these people. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh, isn't it crazy yeah. too when you like, cause like obviously we get so used to meeting the people that we've impacted, whether it's through the vlogs or yeah. the books or the podcasts or whatever. Then when the tables turn, it's always so funny because like Dude, like those are the nights that I'll just remember forever. Yeah, dude. And like, the, like I'll never be able to. I, I, I briefly told the story for like twenty seconds on Impulsive about meeting Dave, and I'll never be able to do that story justice until I write my next book. And that, and like the the stories that are going to go into that book are going to be some of the most obscene and ridiculous <laughs> stories because this wasn't like I won't get into the details because I don't want to like misspeak or like step over boundaries. But like, it wasn't like we we're just like hanging out talking. Like yeah. we had a night. Dude. Yeah. We had a whole ass night, yeah, dude. Yeah, you're out till 3 a.m. Yeah. at club. Yeah, <laughs> like, we had a whole ass night. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, so like I just need to make sure that it's told in like the appropriate like way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he is, he is. Um, I love his loyalty to Ohio. Uh, so loyal like, to Ohio, uh, like, dude. Like when I met him, he had his he had his like right hand man with him. Right. And my guy was connecting the dots. Who right? was it? Radio or who's he or? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Right. Um, but they were trying to, like, basically yep. connecting the dots yep. through each other. Sure. And uh, I swear it wasn't until, like, I, I saw the connection when he was like, he's from Ohio. Oh, game Dave over. Dave turned around, shook my hand. Yep. It was, he was like the nicest guy ever. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was Dude, I was on cloud nine just to Cra shake his hand. Bro. Dude, I, I like, woke up the next day and I was like, bro, <laughs> what, what happened? happened last night? Dude, like what all an, of us. Wow, I can't wait to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll tell yeah. you more about it after. Oh, but it was that's just, awesome. He, he, he's, he's awesome. But, yeah, um, Britt is like, you're, you're fangirling so hard. That's bro. how I was too. Yeah. I was too. But it's, it's, it's real wild what we get to do, man. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's such a gift. Yeah. It's such a blessing. Like uh, most of my career, I've, I've just like, it's a fairy tale. Like I'm living in a fairy tale. Yeah. Well, this isn't real. Yeah. Like it's it's beautiful. I'm so thankful for it. And that's and that's what I have to remind myself every day. Yeah, it's know? just such a gift. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So what was some fun stuff, man? Yeah, yeah. What's some fun stuff going on <laughs> in Mike's life? Dude, I mean, right now I'm just looking at I'm really looking at the 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 content evolution and transition. I mean, I've been I've been vlogging now for like three or so years, and it's and it's like every week, dude. You know, like a million, two million, yeah, whatever it is, views for for a long time now. And I think and I think the YouTube algorithms become even harder now. I think it's it's everybody's viewership's down on YouTube. I mean, so. it's it's a lot of people have moved to other places and so yep. on and so forth. So. Um, but, but regardless of that, it's been a great, it's been incredible to be able to create every week and be able to tell these stories. But I, I, um, dude, I love food. I am obsessed with food, namely cheeseburgers. That's kind of like, obviously, as you guys yeah. know, we went on the burger review in, in, uh, in Nashville. Yeah. Was it uh, my, you know, the and, best. And I, and I see your stories battling between I'm working out hard. But I'm still gonna do these food reviews. Yeah, right? I think that's it's like, important. I think yeah. it's important for people to know that you can still have fun. You know, I mean, okay. if, if if you saw what I generally try to eat, otherwise yeah. it's pretty bland and boring. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, yeah. I, I I I definitely eat a ton of other cool stuff. But I just started a new. Uh, this is this isn't even like a plug. It's just like a fun thing. I started a new food page on Instagram called Crumbs of Anarchy. It's like Sons Anarchy, but crumbs. Okay. Like, I like food it. Page. I like it, bro. And I've been having so much fun, just like because I do get. The opportunity to go to a lot of cool places for food and 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 so on and so forth. So I've been doing stuff in that space. I'm trying to build some more IP there, and I, I you know, 
kind of transparently have been working on some burger IP. Heck so yeah. so like having my own spot and well, so trying go, to figure dude. out how to how to get that done. But um You need your own prime. Yeah. You know what's Mike's? Yeah. What's Mike's thing? Yeah, hundred percent. And and mm. also just like so so it's that uh the the podcast is 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 now finally moving. So like that's that's a, a massive production. I'm not um after the amount of time and obviously with like the, the size that that show can be, I'm not gonna, I'm not doing it kind of like, um, in like a, a makeshift way. So it's, it's agency represented production company represented, you know, there will be casting for co-hosts. Like it's like a whole thing. Um, and so the, the wheels are turning on that one. And then, and then most importantly is like, what is the, um, what does the future of impact look like? You know, how do we, how do we, I, I have talked about it a lot and I've, I've stopped talking about it because I want to, I want to actually really act on it, but I've been putting together a program called Mike's bikes, um, that allows, uh, uh, you know, myself as well as, as donors to get, um, bikes in the hands of people who are fresh out of rehab, who have no transportation, oh, cool. who have no way to get back and forth. And also who are struggling with those demons we talked about and need Heck to move yeah. their feet. Mm -hmm. And and get them get themselves in a ben better mental place, and so it'd be delivering a bike, uh, helmet, and bike lock um, to to addicts who are in recovery and need a way to get f to their meetings, get to job interviews, yeah. and That's just really find cool. a new passion in life. So, Dude, yeah. I love that. Hey, if you need any help, let me know. Oh, you'll be called yeah. on all of those things. That's I mean, really once they're cool. all in, in in motion, I just Heck have yeah. a habit of moving too slow sometimes, but they're in yeah. motion. <laughs> So I, do you ever, do you ever, well, I don't know how to ask that question, but basically you seem very good at helping others. And and from what I tell you, you're very hard on yourself. Yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> tough, man. I know. That's tough, man. It's, it's really the only thing that makes me feel good, dude, anymore. It's the only high I've left, honestly. I, re I really mean that. I've, I've exhausted every other avenue of addiction and, and, you know, dopamine. I, yeah. I really, I mean, like it, it, it's foul to say, but like sexual escapades, I've checked every box. Like just, there's just nothing left there. There's nothing left on getting high. There's nothing left on gambling. I've wow. seen every hundred thousand dollar chip and, and <laughs> like it's over. You know what I'm wow. saying? I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like you've done it. I've done it. And it, <clears throat> and, and now the thing that truly makes me happy is, is seeing other people happy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And like, and like, dude, like. I I am so susceptible to to empathy for others. Like mm. like I mean, dude. Like if if when people come, like the one of my my the things I feel best about, and one of the things I'm most proud of about, is if you ever find someone who has met me in person, they will they will tell you that they're shocked by what they witnessed. Like mm. I do, I will not stop until I get to every person, dude, like f meet and greets for me, public podcast, bad idea, because I will not leave <laughs> Hit that spot. Mm. I won't. And when, and when someone comes up to me with the book and they start crying, yeah. ha which happens every time times 15, I cry with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when, when someone comes up to me and they tell me about how they made it out and how, they want to be like me and how they want to be successful and how they see a path for themselves because of a story that I told, I cry happy joy, you know, tears with them. Yeah. And, and this, this empathy thing. And I, I, I hate to, to talk about it again is the thing that we're so missing right now, bro. Yeah. And, and, and on the internet right now and on Twitter and all these, and all these platforms that we all spend our, our, all of our waking hours on, you just, you just, unfortunately see a tremendous amount of people who have never been down bad before mm. and they don't know what it's like to be down bad. So they don't feel for those people. Mm -hmm. When I see someone hurting for whatever reason, whether it's their own doing or not, that hurts me always. That mm. always hurts me. That always makes me feel upset and, and, and hurt. And I, and I, and I said this on a podcast, I think the simplest definition of empathy is watching someone struggle or suffer makes you struggle or suffer. It, it's almost like a one for one transaction. You immediately feel that pain mm -hmm. because you've been through it and you know what it's like. And so it sounds a lot like Jesus. Yeah. Well, it sounds a lot like damn, Jesus. Please, don't compare me you to know, that. No, man. I, no but what I'm saying is uh, you have the gift of charity, man. Yeah, for sure. That's, 
that's, I mean, if you don't have charity, you have nothing. Yeah. That's huge. Well, it's, it's a cheat code for me because now that I found out that that's what makes me feel good, it's like no. almost like a selfish. Well, like, it's, a, it's a cheat code for everybody. Yeah. It's a, it's a cheat code for everybody, man. Do, do an, any act for anybody and watch how good you feel. Yeah. That's something that so many of us are missing. I fight for it constantly. I know we get to do a lot of good things for people, but even the little things, man, the little thing. It's crazy. Maybe George was just saying it. It's like, we don't even help old people anymore. Like trying to get out of the car across the street. They're probably going to scream in fear. Yeah. But like, it wasn't long ago where people just help people. All the time. Like we loved each All other. All the time. And we've lost that. We're divided. We're, 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 we're out to, to bring everybody down and drama and hate. And like the gift of charity is huge. And you have that. Yeah, absolutely. Never, it's, it's, it, dude, never stop it. Never no, be. No. Oh, I be need to do more. Be That's the issue. Yeah, I just need to do more. And like yeah. that was kind of like the issue with the book was that like it kind of like w when it when it started doing the numbers that it did, it made me want to like pull my foot off the pedal a little bit because I was like, damn, bro, like I just changed the world, like yeah. at least one sector of the world. Like I made yeah. a real absolutely. dent, dude, on absolutely. the addiction community with this book. And it made me feel kind of like complacent. And that's and and that's like another thing that's just that it, that like I always try to deliver out is like, dude, comf being comfortable is scary, bro. Yeah, it is. It's so scary, bro, because like everything I have in my life and it, for everybody out there watching this, like, the, like, or a lot of the people that are struggling watching this, which so many people out there are, we all are, right? We'll be happy to hear this. Everything I have in my life is a result of times I had my back against the wall. Mm. The times when I had to fight to, to figure it out yeah. and to come up with a solution to a problem that I didn't think I was going to be able to come up with a solution to. And without those days of being pushed to create greatness from what you feel like you might not be able to, you would have nothing. I would have nothing. I would not have any of this stuff. Yeah. This is all a result of, of doing things that I had to do. And life sometimes gets scary when you, when you have an option and you get to do all the things that you want to do because those things might not always align with your with your true calling, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's the fight. Yeah. It's the, it's, the, it's the separation between those that fight and those that don't. The give up or fight. And you are obviously a top fighter. Always. You always. Have, you, you, you wouldn't be where you're at successfully and I wouldn't mentally. I would be alive, dude. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't even be alive, bro. Yeah, you probably shouldn't be alive. No, I You chose to should. fight hard. And that's what, you know— Everybody listening, you just can never stop fighting. You never sit still. You got to keep going. I man. sign every book <laughs> the same thing. And I wish I could like lie right now and say I write an individualized message in every book, but it would be impossible when I get in these book signing scenarios. Two words. In every, I have written this in thousands of books. Keep going. Keep going. That's it, bro. That is the message. And it gets it gets more descriptive in the fifth vital. There's times where you got to really physically put your shoulder down and drive that thing through obstacles yeah. like there's no tomorrow with no you know mercy whatsoever for what's in front of you you just got to fight mm -hmm. and some days you're gonna and some days you're gonna crawl some days you're gonna walk some days you're gonna some run days you're gonna get thrown back, back yeah dude. but regardless you have to keep going you have to keep moving forward and that's yeah. such a that's such a big piece of advice for, even for the smallest scenarios i mean you look Absolutely. at these people who like go to the airport and they 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 get hit with a flight delay, and they're gonna miss their connecting flight. Mm -hmm. And they say, "Honey, bring me home, bring me home. This is not our trip to go on." You know what I'm saying? And they start th or they start throwing a tantrum and they start mm -hmm. assaulting the <laughs> person <laughs> at the gate. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, bro? If you can get in the habit of simply looking at obstacles in your life as, as redirects yeah. and as ways to get creative and, and move in a different direction. And like, when I get a delay now, I'm like, what can I shoot at the airport? There's a content opportunity here. Sure. Wait a <laughs> second. That means I have another 30 minutes now that I can call all of my family members and say, yo, I love you. Just want to reach out. I have a little extra time to immediately. My brain is so trained mm. now to look at every inconvenience as an opportunity. Mm. Awesome. As opposed to an inconvenience that I should get. Dude, energy, bad energy, negative thoughts in, in every aspect. And obviously, I, I can have to continue to work on this yeah. personally in some regards. That energy is so uh, um, 
is so contagious mm-hmm. and so and so important to eradicate from your life. So any inconvenience, if you could look at it as an opportunity for something else, a learning lesson, every time you get pushed back, what did I learn? What am I taking with this? Because every time I get hit with one of these nasty situations in life now, I simply go through my Rolodex and say, January 4th, 2014, went through the same thing, know exactly how to deal with Mm. this now. So now I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to stress. I'm going to just do exactly what I did the first 52 times that I've been through this exact same shit. You know what I'm saying? So people, you just really got to, life is just all about figuring out how to maneuver this thing. Yeah. That's it. Well, I think we're all stuck in the mindset that life should be easy. <laughs> I, I think yeah, like a sure. lot of people are just, why me? Yeah. Why am I going through this? Yeah. Guess what? Everybody's going through it. We go through it with our 11-year-old, like going to school. He's worrying about a test. Do the best you can. If you want to study more, study more. If you want to like, you, have, you just have to do it. Right. You may yeah. fail. Yeah, yeah. But you just can the, redo it. But just the concept of just uh, w- the why me mindset. The worst. That's what really yeah. buries people. Why me? They want sympathy. They want to feel sorry for themselves. Those are the ones that never come out of that hole. Yeah. Like it's the energy. It's the big energy. Well, I was, I mean, I'll say this, dude. I've been through every, you know, r- r- rendition or, or version of, yeah. of, of person in this yeah. life, you know, and I was why me for a while. Yeah. You know oh, what so I'm saying? Yeah, I, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like it's, and so it, the good thing is yeah. the best thing about life is generally speaking, unless you're up real bad there's you get some chances yeah. your brain is malleable your mind is malleable and you can continue to adjust and revise and and, and create the best possible you um and and you know but but i mean the one thing i've always gone back on is like dude i've been through scenarios that and and it's why i can continue to i've been through scenarios that the average person would have would have given up they sure. would have they would have i mean you know bone, bones hanging out the side of my skin bleeding out on the street still handcuffed you know like like every i mean i've 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 seen every single I've lost, you know, a third to, to more of my blood multiple times. Jeez. I've been in ICUs. I've been in traction. I've been addicted to heroin for years at a time and, and you know, had to deal with every everything. And all of that trained me into is this warrior mindset mm-hmm. that when, when things pop, dude, it's actually funny. But when things start to pile up to a point for me where... I don't want to get back to that point where I'm like, damn, I hope that day never comes. It's funny because once that shit happens, I click on, dude. Mm. I click on and I'm like, here we go, baby. Let's go. You're right. Let's go, dude. And that's when I really start to activate. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all I ever knew. All I ever knew was, yo, there's no way out of this. But you got to keep going. You got to keep looking for for a solution. And no matter what, you got to keep that light on. Inside of you, in your heart, bro, because that thing gets dim, dude, at times, bro. <laughs> it's 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 a wild life. And I, I we, we mentioned this the other day. I think you could take anybody off the street and throw them on this couch and probably have a fantastic story. For sure. Everybody has a phenomenal life. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. That's nuts. And we're honored to have you sitting here, man. Because it sounds like we were here, very bro. close to never meeting. So close. So, <laughs> so close. Crazy, dude. man. Now my mom's watching this episode, you know, and like, yeah. that's awesome, bro. Well, it's know? beautiful. It's, a, it's just such an inspiring story and the overcome, just the, just the, the power of overcoming problems. There's always yeah. a solution. There's always a way out, uh, but you've got to work hard. You got to <laughs> work day, hard, bro. You got to want to live. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, you already know. You yeah. Already know. I think, I think I got a good feel for it. And, and yeah. more, you know, for me though, that's like. On days when I wake up and I still, like I said, I'm just susceptible to, to bad days and, and, you know, days I wake up and I'm just like, dude, like, man, like I'm just, I have days where I'm just like, I don't, don't want to do this anymore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like still, even now. Right. And the one thing that always turns me around is I'm like, damn, dude, I'm happy to be here, bro. God dang. And like, like, I might not be happy. Uh, gratitude is, is the, the foundation king. for happiness. King. Yeah. I feel like it's something not taught. It's not. It's dude. not taught, and it's a secret. Once you learn it, it's so powerful. We're starting to teach it now. I feel like we are. The it's influencers so funny. are. How crazy is it that we are becoming teachers that are actually putting stuff out there that may no f- 
that will be more beneficial than any of the math that we ever learned, any of the science we ever learned. I don't think I heard the word gratitude till I was a full grown adult. A hundred percent. If you did, <laughs> especially coming from where we come yeah. from, like that side of the country or that part of the world, like gratitude, what are you, a hippie? It's a weird what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Like, word. here's a, some, something to be grateful for. <laughs> Go pour concrete. Shut up. Like here. <laughs> yeah. When I first came out here, like, I would always see these people like, dude, I'm just so grateful. Like, like, and, and, and still like some of them are even overboard, to be honest with yeah. you. They're like, dude, like, it, I don't want to like be an asshole, but they're like, dude, like I was in Ohio this weekend, just hemmed up on ayahuasca with my shaman. And like, dude, <laughs> like I just realized that. And, and I'm not, you know, like I'm not dissing on that, but there are some that do get like yeah. a little carried away with it. But the gratitude thing is 100% fact. If yeah. you can constantly be grateful for the fact that you are breathing what? you have food on your plate you have a roof protecting you from the elements you have a family that loves you you're talking about four things that there are a lot of people on this planet that don't have yeah. mm -hmm. they're either in the ground they're not breathing they they lost that battle that you're fighting right mm. now that you have the blessing of fighting they have family members that don't talk to them they have parents that don't love them they can't afford to put food on the table for their family the 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 bount, bount, bounty, the cup runneth over. You know what I'm saying? Like literally for so many of us yeah. and, and on days when I'm really going through it, dude, like that's the first reminder I make to myself is like, dude, like are you f serious? How, like for, I get mad at myself then. How yeah. dare you? I catch myself How dare all you? the time. That's it, like the first thing our, I tell our kids. I'm like go write down, draw me a picture, whatever you can do, five things. That you're thankful for. Every time yeah. they get in trouble. Every time. Every time. Go write down 10 things you're grateful for. That's like so great. they're like grumpy or bad mood. Like now, now look, if you didn't have one of those things, then you have a reason to be grumpy. You guys are, you guys are so awesome. I, I just, I have to say it, dude. Like, and I know I, I tell you all the time, but like just, uh, it's just such an exemplar, exemplary like relationship and, and, and. And just such a, a, a testament to, to parenthood and, and just honestly, like, I think like when I do fix myself to a point where I can have the things that you guys have the opportunity to have, I'm going to be watching your guys stuff as like an instruction manual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause you guys are really, dude, I don't know, man. It's, it's just like you I said, do, I know dude, like everybody. you guys are, you guys are awesome, bro. Yeah. And, and sis. Thank you. <laughs> we try. Thank you. We try. I, I think once you, uh. Back to gratitude real quick. Once you, once you wake up and that's enough, yeah, that's when things start getting better. Yeah. Like yeah. Once you realize that when you've opened your eyes in the morning, you've already been given the greatest gift you could receive that whole day. It's not money. Right. It's not relationships, not success. It's literally another day, which is so valuable. Yeah. I, I saw, uh, what was that? Ah, uh, oh, who was it? It's just an Instagram reel, a famous guy. He's, he's saying like, maybe Tom Cruise or someone, he's like, at best, at average, you get 75 summers, 75 winters, 75 falls. And I'm hearing that like, that is nothing. When you hear it like that, yeah. how many summers have I burned up? 40. Yeah. At best, I only have this many summers left. It's bro. crazy. And, and that's like, that's one of the things too, is like you, just how much you your mindset about life changes as you age too. Uh, and yeah, and that's is. something like, yeah. that's another struggle I've had too lately mm. is just has been, and I'm sure like you guys can relate to it in some aspect or, or way, but like, you know, you, 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 you start to have to come to terms with the, with the mortality of all this. You yeah, know what man. I'm saying? It's, 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 it's something I struggle with, you know, and I, and I, you know, I'm a Christian as well. Not a, probably not as good a Christians as you guys are, but you know, I guess we all fall short, right? We but, all fall yeah, short. But, sure. but like, you know, that, that surely helps me a little bit, but like, man, it, it um, it's tricky, bro. It's tricky because it's something you don't want to talk about and it's something mm. you don't want to burden other people with. But you know, as you continue to age and you watch the kids grow up and you watch, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, um, family members pass yep. and, and, you know, yep. obviously in, in your situation, just such a, just such a tragic thing. And I and don't want to get into it if it's not something you want to, but, um, it, it really just, it really just concretes and cements the fleeting nature of all of this. The importance of life hits you real hard. 
I think once you start, when, you, when you're on that runway and you see more runway in the rearview mirror than in front of you, you start thinking of time a lot different, yeah. right? And it's like, uh, when you're a kid, you don't think about it at all. You have you're never going to die. You're, you're never going to die. Never, ever. And then you're right. Like, I'm coming up on 40, dude. I'm about to be 40. I'm thinking a lot more about time. Bro. Yeah. I'm like, if I have 20 more years, like, that's not that much, bro. Yeah. You gotta last long, like longer than I do. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You're gonna I'm leave a, me here forever. I'm just too much of a risk taker. I love adrenaline. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't right. drink caffeine. The only way I get a fix is by doing something Stunts, stupid. Yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah, it's like that's my hobby. Yeah, but you've been go back and falling back on it a little bit, though. I feel like you're not still doing the same. No. You're still going nuts. No, 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 no. He's no, flying no. helicopters. I'm no. tired, though. I'm tired. Same, bro. Yeah, bro. And just... that's, that's one of the worst. So, so honestly, like, that's a good conversation because <laughs> being here in L.A., yeah. like you guys are right now, you're, you're kind of in the epi epicenter of this um, hacking world, biohacking yeah. world. And, you know, I'm I'm very transparent guy. I'll talk about it with you guys. So, so first and foremost, do you know – and by the way, this – this is definitely a, a topic that can be um, debated and we could talk about it. But one of the reasons why it's believed that women actually live longer than men, which they do, they have a longer average lifespan. Ironically, doctors have been telling me recently is because they donate some of their blood once a month for the majority of their life. Right. Men do not have periods, Right. Oh my God, I said it. That that's could gonna be get, debated. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to get clipped out. But f that, men don't have periods, right? Facts. Sorry. So, so men don't have periods, so we don't bleed once a month, right? Now, lately I've been dumping blood once a month now. Hmm. So it's one of the things that I do. I go and they stick a massive, you know, large gauge needle in my, in my vein and I dump a, a, a percentage of my blood every month which then forces my body to create brand new Reproduce. red blood cells. This goes way back in time, leaching. right? Yeah. Back to leaching, yeah. the times of leaching. And so like you're starting to see a lot of these alternative traditional medicine and, and uh, ther uh, therapeutic approaches come back and holistic approaches come back. Now, that also gets combined with some new age stuff we can talk about. NAD, stuff like NAD, that? NAD yeah. uh, has, you know, the peptides are great. A lot of people are doing peptides. They're expensive, obviously. Yeah. And I we'll see if they continue to you know, change in cost over the next yeah. few years. I also am a, am a, a person who buys into um, hormone replacement. And so um, as, as we get older, testosterone, uh, testosterone yeah. yeah. And, and estrogen for women as well. But as we get older, our, our, our body naturally stops producing as much testosterone. Yep. And so much of our life and our life force and energy is based on our hormones. And like, people don't talk about this enough or think about this enough, but, um, Mental clarity, sex drive, so libido, um, you know, problems with anxiety, depression, um, a lot of this, uh, and, and as well as physical fitness, can be tied back to lack or or excessive testosterone or estrogen in men and yep. women. So, so finding out where you are on that on that standpoint is is important as well. It's like m more importantly than anything is just getting these tests done. Go mm -hmm. get if you don't buy into the science and you don't believe that there's a reason for you to use any of this stuff. At the very minimum, go get a baseline on your blood. Yep, be be, be, be getting tested constantly for all kinds of different yeah. things. We, we get blood work every couple months. Two so months. I was yeah. I was doing peptides for six months. Yeah, it's like doing different ones, and I ended up having to stop them completely. TMI, TMI, <laughs> making my periods like. Almost going to the hospital. Really? So, so intense. Bad. That's the thing. There's there's going to be things that are by person. And there's right. a lot of different peptides. C correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I would, that was NAD as well, right? Well, I was doing was NAD, NAD too. NAD, right, right. So there's, I mean, there's so much stuff. And, and, and like, listen, disclaimer right now. Talk to your professional. Right. We are not them. So, so we are I'm far from far from them. So <laughs> please don't take any advice from us. But like, minimum, get your baselines. Yeah. Find out where you're at. I mean, there. But it's just it's it's. I think you know, we're in a weird place right now where where 
God dang, I want to make sure I'm careful with this because you want to monetize this. Science is kind of debatable right now because we've had some things happen over the past couple of years that have made people lose slash gain whatever based on the person, their feelings about and, and, and trust in the scientific world. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> please trust the scientists. Like they're, they're, there's a reason why we are living three to four times longer now as opposed to, you know, 50, 60 or 80 years ago or 100 years ago. It's because of our advent advent and advancements in science. Dude, the health system, it, dude, how wild what they can fix in a hospital now. It's insane. Dude, it's insane. It's nuts. We're, we're like coming up on a time where like, and I hope we make it. Right? Where I know we're going to be right on the edge. Yeah, where they can potentially like keep us alive for a long time, a long time. Bro, just- uh, I don't know just, if that's a good thing. I don't either. Something cool about the blood work thing yeah. is like- I deal with a lot of panic attacks and anxiety and there's something about like blood work. It's very simple to do. It doesn't hurt. It gives me such peace of mind. Knowing. Like I know I'm okay. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's like, oh, well, everything looks great. Right. So I have to deal with these panic attacks on my own. It's like something I have to overcome. It's yeah. not my health. Right. No, I'm that's good. a great feeling. I'm not going to die. Yeah. Right. That's a great feeling. And by the way, also- mm -hmm. On the flip side, and like, you know, you hate to bring it there, but the last thing you want to know is that you had something that could have been prevented early or if yeah. you had caught it because you were too lazy to go get blood work yeah. or, or to yeah. get tested in some way. And so like, it's just so important. And now, like I've moved on to like the highest levels of, of the approach. Like we now, um, how to hug. How he's out there. <laughs> Dude, he's the base. I love so him. Funny. He's I love so him. funny. But, um, we, uh. You know, we've moved on to to like really getting deep into these tests now. Now they have tests where like they'll deliver a chart back with, you know, 1,500 items on it. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you know, when you eat cauliflower in its raw state, it's spiking this enzyme by X percentage. So try it in its cooked state at this mm. amount of cups per day. Like, by the way, now it's getting so crazy that they'll then take that test put it into a machine that will spit out 60 tablets that you'll take two of a day Jeez. that will address all 1,500 items. So basically it's like a, a, a computerized program that will take your exact individualized results and create a, a compound that is made specifically for you. Holy smoke. So, so that is where we are moving from a medicinal standpoint is into a place of personalized medicine. Because we all need different things. We all need completely yeah. different things. I mean, the one-stop uh, shop approach of, of you know, mental illness and, and, and physical wellness is not the right play whatsoever. We all demand uh, completely different pro programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all producing different things at different speeds and yeah i you weigh a lot more than her but you take yep. the same exact pill yeah it's, it's like crazy it, it's it's, 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 wild. it's nuts and you're in the epicenter of it right now i mean i'm yeah. I, it's crazy to say dude i'm getting blood work so can i can three, i ask you three, four times a month right now <laughs> which is dude i think it's a great we, thing i mean we've had ours done quite a bit lately yeah, yeah I, I love it and i love like now having baselines and having now you're building like a history of of Right. Levels, right? Right, right, right. But can can I ask you about the yeah. testosterone? Sure. So that's something that I have been looking into, yeah. but I have not ever done. Sure. So once you start that, yep. It's that's it's for life, right? It can be. It can be for now are you, sure. Are you using needle in the butt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can be. It and and by the way, like take it from me. There's there's nothing that scares me personally, obviously. Then entering into any program that could potentially have that type of longevity. I do not take any chances there, right? Sure. Um, and so the, you, you really do have to weigh it out. If you are, if you are first and foremost, once again, talk to your doctor. But the way I look at it is in, if you're in your 20s. Yeah. You're not going to need it. You, I, I, unless you are extremely low T. And those people do exist. Yep. Yeah. There are low T individuals out there that are, that are, so the, so the, the range for testosterone is from, I think, around 300 it might be 270 
up to, you know. 1,200. Yeah, and like yeah. the 1,200, 1,150, yeah. 1,200 range. Yeah, and each each place has a little bit different numbers, but it's somewhere. It's yeah. in, that's like the kind of range yeah, they eight, use. eight, 900, you're, you're doing great. You're chill, no, yeah, you're chilling. You're I mean, great. dude, honestly, yeah. if you're in your 20s even, and, and like my assumption would be is if, even if you're in your, you know, high sixes, low sevens, you're chilling. Yep. But if you're, but if you're in, if you're 22 years old and you're coming in at 350 on a testosterone exam, you might want to <laughs> consider it because there is, Dude, there's a there's a detriment to your your health. We have to have and it. Your hormones control your brain. Correct, correct, a hundred percent. So much is 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 driven by hormones. So, yes, it was something that I really had to think through. But at 38, mm-hmm. well, I guess I started when I was 37. Okay. Um, looking around at my complementaries and and competitors and people that I knew in the space that were also utilizing, I mean, dude, like Joe Rogan's obviously a huge proponent of, and I'm not saying to take all of his medical advice, but like, there's a lot of wealthy people. It's just facts for men need testosterone. Correct. It's important to us. I, um, I started on a, I started on a moderate dose, but then found that I was doing very well with a very low dose. Okay. So I'm at a, I'm at a, I do a, um, twice a week. I'm twice a week. Some people will say do, some people do every day yeah. through, um, uh, thigh as opposed to the, the butt. And it's, it, you know, you can do it painlessly to yourself if you want. I've been doing just fine with twice a week. I, it, once a week, not as well because you do start to trough. Yep. And so I do twice a week, Tuesday, Friday. I do one before the weekend. I'll do a leg day on Friday along with it, really get a testosterone boost for the weekend. But for the most part, I am extremely low. So I do about 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5 uh, per week. And I, I don't know how to describe that in like a, 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 a term of like what that dosage actually is. I, people who know the no testosterone will know what that means. Did you notice a notice, noticeably different? Extremely. Yeah. I have, Extremely. A, cu- I have a couple friends on it. They look and 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 put off a whole new vibe. Yep. I mean, they they just look great. They they look like they feel great, um, and it's something I've been heavily considering. I yeah. think I think um, I, I would just need to order. I would mentally, I would need to have about a six month supply at my house in case something goes wrong with the world, and now I can't get my testosterone, y- and I need my backup, and I'm not crashing, and like. So what I'll say <laughs> is this, dude. Like you 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 like will you'll like reset. It's it's not like you you don't die like no you no get, but you crash hard right you you it, depending on your dose so if you're mm-hmm. like if you're like taking like a major dose or or a dose that substantially affects yeah. your your test then yes if you if you were to cold turkey you would have some sort of reaction to that mm-hmm. whereas you would like you those basically you would return to your resting state but that return would be so abrupt that it would feel not great yeah. right um, but. The idea that that would happen, it, it, we would end up in a place where you wouldn't be able to have access to it to such a common thing nowadays would mean the world has ended anyways. And so, like, in all honesty, like, bro, like, no, the last, what if, what the last every- thing you're going to be worried about is, like, your test rate at that point <laughs> because you're going to be fighting with an AR-15 for your kids and shit. Like, but I won't be able to zombies. fight without my needles, bro. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> You get them, babe. Yeah. Get them, babe. Your test is high. I just you think I just think of like all the supply train uh, train supply, supply train. All the trains cr- they yeah. derail at the <laughs> same time. Yeah, yeah. All my test is on there. Yeah. 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 You can, dude. You can get it pretty easy. And I think like uh-huh. as long as you had like a full bottle on the side, what you would do is you would just start to wean off a little bit at a time. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I've started. Because I'm always like a big weaner. <laughs> That's how he got his name. I knew it. That's how I got off methadone. Wow. Believe it or not, because I was on methadone for a long time, six years, Dang. and so I had to wean off of that too. So I'm, I, I know how to, how to, you know, wean off of stuff. Yeah, I imagine around forty or so, I'm gonna dabble. Bro, I, dude, really, that's like in a few months. I, yeah, it is. I know. Happy I early birthday, bro. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I can't poke myself, dude. Oh my gosh. She had, she had a peptide. Uh, she's like, I could not get past the pep. The, the idea of just poking myself. Can you can you do it? Dude, yeah. she's so you'll so awesome you'll so, so you'll do his, right? No, I'll just lay down every day and she can just Yeah, so I so ironically <laughs> David does my so like you want a yeah. girl to do it and I'll tell you why. You, a lot of buddies do it and this is like where you could really see like how broy like the bromance is because in all reality when you when you administer a shot to someone's ass, you pinch the yeah, yeah. the location yeah. to separate the, the the I don't even know why they do but I was the, from the muscle to separate the muscle yeah. from the skin or whatever it is so it's a, a more 
painless experience. Yeah. Well, David and me are not like on that bromance level. Like he doesn't like grabbing my ass like that. <laughs> so every two, twice a week, he just bang jams the thing in there. It's not, you know, a pleasant experience. No. So ideally. Why don't you, you would, just do it? I, I just, so he, everybody else does their own. Yeah. Yeah. I just, for whatever reason, I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. Or I, I just haven't tried it. I bet you if I just did it one time. I would stand there for an hour. <laughs> no, I, would, I can get it done. I guess also it's like a lot, just like anything else that we've talked about on the show with me today. It's a combination of like being scared, but also oh. being lazy. Like if somebody comes up, to, if somebody came up to you right now and they're like, do you want to do it yourself or do you want me to do it? Like, and it, and it's somebody that's yeah, like trained do to do it. it. So this is like a th problem with me because even with like, as far as like my editor is concerned on my content, like I didn't pass my content off to an editor for three years yep. because guess what? I know how to edit it. Mm -hmm. yep. Why well, do I want to show you how to edit my content? I have a very specific <laughs> editing style. I don't want you to edit it. I edit it. And that's a, a very, very bad approach to business mm. and shooting yourself in the ass. Yeah. So like, yeah, like, dude, a lot of, like some stuff you, you want to do your, it, or like basically like learn <laughs> what makes the most sense for a scenario. Sometimes it is giving it to an editor yeah. and sometimes doing it yourself. So yeah. like, I'm not the best at like new things. I know I can't do it. I you can't. Can I can't do it. Yeah, I did it. I did it morning and night were the ones that I was on for every like day. six months. Right, every day. So that so that's so that was NAD and then well, like CJC um, or something like that. I don't know. It was like a mixture of different peptides Got it. in yeah. in one. Yeah, because there's some that have like that kind of effect on your on your hormone, like your hormones are like bleeding or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So can you isolate and remove that one and just go back to so because NAD is great. We're debating right now. Well, I still do the like the NAD drip injections, um, but we're debating right now whether it's my implants that are actually making me sick. Got it. And then the peptides just aren't working because my body's like. Yeah. Got it. So yeah, we're She's kind of mess. yeah. She's I'm a mess. mess. His <laughs> blood work. He's like, yeah, everything's good. And then he went to me and he's like. Yeah, you're just, you have like no minerals and your body's doing this and doing this. And it's like, She's like don't depleted. get them removed yet, but <laughs> we may have to well, figure yeah. it out. Oh, so you're, you're talking about breast implants. Yeah. So potential silicone leak? I don't know. Got you it. Don't, yeah, you don't even have to have a leak to have but the I don't know, but, yeah. but, but, but you can... You can have them out, see if that is the case, and then just put new ones. Like technically, you can do whatever you want. Like if I were you... Basically, you, right now, you have a car, like a 96 Altima, that, like, is potentially leaking fluid <laughs> into there the... There only a couple no, years. Sorry, sorry, oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> if they're, they're that like, new. All right, like a, sorry, I didn't know when you had them done. Like, I haven't been up to date. But, like, a, you have, like, a 2019 Camry. <laughs> yeah. Like, or Audi, whatever, right? But it's it potentially could be leaking, like windshield wiper or something even more toxic into the garage that your kids are playing in, right? Yeah. Your body. You can go back. You could potentially end up with like a 2024 like <laughs> Lambo. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can go back, have those things removed, checked out and they're like, oh, like they're not leaking. But you could say, oh, you know what? I want to go a little bigger. I want to go intramuscle. I want to get like a different um, like silicone. Like you can go back on his dime. And this a, do this surgery. This is a breast implant salesman right here. <laughs> yeah, He's, well, I have You've a, sold breasts before. Well, no, if it's your I health, have a two-year-old. Like, yeah. So, you know, not being able to use oh, my arms and yes, stuff, I'm yes. just trying to, like, wait Wait until yeah. he doesn't want to be picked up. Got and it. he's, you know, he's as big as my five-year-old, so. Yeah, he's a Got it. Oh, you got a big one? Oh, dude. How he came big? out nine pounds. <laughs> Kid's a bulldozer, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. I got nieces and nephews now, so, like, I, that's been my training. Yep. Baby Sloan. Baby Sloan came out like, dude, 10 plus, I think. Sheesh. Massive. Massive, dude. So had a hard. cesarean, yeah. Had yeah. the C-section. Just massive. Baby. Yeah, I tried to do a home birth and ended up in the hospital. Right. C-section. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Dude, that kid's so damn cute, bro. Like, well, and, and Chasey, too, my, my older sisters. But, I like, that's been my training. And when I met... So, so Chase, my nephew, I didn't really get the, cause I was out here and I wasn't able to travel back and forth as much cause I hadn't started earning as much yet. And so I only spent so much time with him, but Sloan, I've had the, the, um, the baby girl, I've had the chance to really spend more time with her and dude, like for whatever reason, man, like just being with her, 
I immediately was like, dude, I need one of these. Dude, the- like immediately because she was so like she when she sees me, she starts cracking up. Girl, She's so happy. And I was like, dude, I got to get one of these. The bro. little girls. Yeah. Are on father, daughter, mother, son. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. I love all my kids, but my daughter, bro. <laughs> It is like heaven sent yeah. this perfect being yeah. of innocence and yeah. purity. And it's just. That's how my dad oh. is with my, with my sisters. And then me yeah. and my mom are like best friends. Like the mother son thing yes. is like a whole different. Yes, me and my yeah. mom. Are, yeah. I always went to my mom, dude. Yeah. I always went to my mom, mama's boy. For yeah. sure. That's yeah. me too. I got to talk to her all the time. Yeah. Well, man, I won't get into any drama or beef. Do, do you have any? I don't I don't know. If you have it, bro, I'm here for it. Dude, I, like, I literally am the one guy that can like just, there's nothing off boundary. I mean, like I said, if you want to talk yeah. about the Chinese balloons, Talk about, you know. <laughs> you got intel on the Chinese balloons? I know I keep bringing it up, dude. Hey, what like, do you got, damn, bro? Just, I don't know. Dude, dude the world seems, is so insane right now. It's crazy that those things ended up right over those nuke bases in Montana, in Montana bro. Like, <laughs> like, like, no, it went off course. What do you mean, dude? Like, yeah, dude. Like, Are you are you into any, because I am. I am. Bro, okay. Are you into any, like, conspiracy? So I'll say this. I used to be. Yeah. I used to love conspiracies because back in the day, Conspiracy theories, you would like smoke hella weed. You would get your some snacks, maybe take some shrooms with your boys. It's like movie night. Go down the rabbit <laughs> hole, and then the next day you would wake up, and you wouldn't like, I don't know, storm the Capitol. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, like those were the days when conspiracy shit was dope, bro, because you would just you would just have fun with it. Then when like it turned into like Alex Jones, like Sandy Hook didn't happen. I That's was 15, probably one of the worst. I ones, was 15 yeah. minutes from Sandy Hook. Like that event changed my life, Bro, my I entire was, existence. I was picking my son up at school, which was in the same grade. Yeah. When that happened, and I was sitting in my car picking my son up at school, just like blank. Yep. Yep. Like, me too. I was blank. Bro, I was. I c- could not just fathom that this had happened. This, I cry. I was crying my eyes out, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and so like. I think what kind of happened a little bit, and and and, and I want to I want to preface this. Do you think we landed on the moon? I personally do, but that one is like that one is like a it's little bit convincing. Yeah, though, that one's a little bit more fun to talk about. Yeah. But it's it's like here's where I'm at. I do think that the government, especially the United States government, is super shady, dude. Super shady. Really? Yeah. First, I, I know, I know. Like that's <laughs> really? right. I'm with you, right? <laughs> And and government and sorry sorry corporate owned, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Um, but I think that I believe that both sides, and I hate the fact that I have to say that because unfortunately that's just where we are. Yeah. But both sides of the aisle have learned how to activate the fringe, and the the left has this absolutely ridiculous fringe of just super liberal ridiculousness that by the way i'm so happy that we're starting to push back on because it is so stupid bro Mm -hmm. like and i think we're collectively even moderates are starting to be like okay that side's gone too far this is crazy bro like we are not willing to, to to just lay down for this anymore no but you got to also say that the right has activated a fringe that is a lot of conspiracy theorists yeah mm-hmm. and and that is that the the reason i stopped with the conspiracy stuff is because it started to affect real life mm. and you started to see some of these people who get this hook into them about one little detail when is this episode actually going to come out do you actually think a couple weeks okay yeah. couple weeks or a few weeks three weeks Right now we're dealing with this. This is a hot topic. And okay. I know like this is going to inflame certain people. I don't care. It's just talking yeah, about it. And I'm always down for a conversation. I'm not right or wrong. The the Capitol storming, the J6 stuff, yep. is, is as we're filming this, and I hate to date the episode, is in the zeitgeist. It'll still be being talked about. Tucker Carlson put out this, these, these videos, yep. right? There is no question that there were some people in there that at some point were being peaceful protesters right 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 at some point also the police were cooperating with these people they were letting them into certain areas they weren't trying to arrest them right but the idea 
that that discounts from the fact that these people smashed through a police barricade and broke windows to gain access to one of the most secured locations on the planet is ridiculous. That happened. That 100% happened. We all saw the videos yeah. of them beating down police lines mm -hmm. with weapons to garner access to that building to then do whatever happened next. So regardless... Was there something amiss? Was there, there was something fishy? Was there something fishy? Very well yeah. may have been. But does that fishiness completely distract and take yeah. away from the fact that there was an uprising that broke the doors of the Capitol building yeah. down? Well, both right. sides have a both sides have a a, a a positive, right? Right. Right. Left. Left. Left knows that there was a, a storming of the Capitol. Right. Right and right, right knows now has that there was shit withheld. There's people chilling. There there wasn't enough protection that should have been. That the there's timing was a lot off. of outdoor cops allowing people through. There, you know, that could have easily been more barricaded. A hundred percent. So there's something going on. So here's there. the question. <clears throat> One, I guess the question ends up being. And this is this is where I I, I want to play in the water because it definitely is a question that needs to be asked. And 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 and. First of all, there there is no there is no uh, disagreeing with the fact that there should be complete transparency to these events. If there is video, get that video out there. Right. Once, especially once investigations are wrapped. If it's going to affect an ongoing investigation, I get that. But if investigations are wrapped and there's no foul play involved and there's no government foul play involved, or even if there is, we need that transparency. Yeah. We need to see the videos beyond just what the media shows us. I get that. There's no question about that. How it was released directly into the hands of Tucker Carlson, <laughs> that's up for debate. I mean, if you think that that's the way it should be done, I think it should hit a third-party neutral website that we can all draw our own conclusions. I guess we can, right? Yeah. But it was it was somehow funneled directly into the hands of someone who has an obvious bias. Why yeah. wasn't the video surfaced sooner? I don't know. So those are the questions you want to nah. ask. But here's the main question. You see... You see the police who are not arresting and they are escorting instead. Yeah. At, at this point, things have become more calm down and we're like peaceful it looked like inside. I don't know how that happened. The question becomes this. Were those police given an order to stand down, right. become um, bystanders compliant. or compliant or whatever by a commander above them? Or did they make individual decisions on their own to say, okay, we also don't believe that this election was, mm. was you know, by the book. So yeah. we are going to do what we want now. If it was presented by a commanding officer, who was he commanded by? Yeah. Right. Did he make a decision where he said, I don't believe this election was fair. Now I'm going to give the order to, to tell them to stand down. Or did it come from Democrat? Like, which is the kind of the conspiracy yeah, end of yeah. it. Did it come from a, a leader, right? Here's another question. Is there a playbook that says if you lose ground and it's clear that the protesters have taken over, all police stand down right? for, for value of personal safety die. or right. we're all going to die. Yeah. I don't know these yeah. things. We don't know these things. But to the point of the people who are fighting right now, that transparency is important. How that story gets spun is 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 also important. And, and in my mind, you you can't just put out new footage and then distract from the fact that there was a breaking and entering with Confederate flags and weapons into the. <laughs> sorry, right. sorry, you're not just right. going to eliminate well, that. I, part. I think the most destructive part of the whole thing is it just further divided the country. You watch Fox. It was peaceful. You watch CNN that was bashing yep, and yep. people raging the building. More division. If, Here, no matter, wherever you watch is what you believe. Here's the thing. Yeah. Until we scrap the two-party system, yeah. which is 100% financially beneficial to corporations, to politicians, to presidents, we will see no progress. That system is broken. So there, broken. We are not saving it. It, it, the the lines are clear as day. Everyone who agrees with X Y Z goes this way. Everybody yeah. who agrees with X Y Z goes that way. Ironically, the funny thing about it is, ninety percent of us 
me, you three, everyone else in this room right now are all in the middle. Yeah. We're all in the middle. Yeah. We don't believe we believe some of the things from this side, yeah. some of the things from this side. We all just want to have a peaceful place for our families to hang out. Ten percent of this country is ruining it for everyone else. Yeah. And and unfortunately, there's no. I just don't see a solution at this point unless unless we scrap that system, dude, or unless we get a real meaningful third party candidate that it, a moderate. Or there's a big national disaster. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I don't either, but that's usually when we come together. Yeah, yeah facts. That's when everyone's like, Bro, you remember, know what? Remember post 9-11? Let's set everything aside. I love you, dude. Love you, dude. Love you. Let's raise the flag. Well, unfortunately, it, it, it sometimes comes as a result of a common enemy. Yeah. Because that's when it's like, dude, why am I fighting my neighbor? Yeah. That's my neighbor Should just because they voted for somebody else? Like, that dude like we gotta go kill this person yeah it's you know what i'm saying it's it's, crazy how we how our minds work it's painful times dude so painful painful. times like i hate i hate that i'm supposed to hate somebody because of the way they think yeah i'm just supposed to hate them yeah and they're supposed to hate me yeah you know if i have an american flag i'm i voted for trump i'm racist that's what, and is that's it, the and look is it now. like and is it like the we know it's we know the media is perpetuating yeah. 100% like, there's yeah. no question about it but my question is this did the media just pick up on the fact that we already were kind of divided and just further it or do you think they created it because we've always been Dems and Republicans we've always right. been like red blue we've always been this candidate teams. that candidate teams yeah. but the media figured out like damn if I talk about one side, so like, like, dude, moderate channel started to die. Like BBC was always a moderate. AP was always a moderate. Like, dude, here's what we're, we're going to, here's the news. Yeah. Three people are dead. It's being investigated by the police. That's what news used to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, if you watch the left, th- uh, three, three black cops are dead and a white person is being held you know, accountable for it. If you watch the right, three cops are dead and, you know, uh, 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 someone got this done and it would have been done with a gun or a knife. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. the, there's, there's bias. Even when people don't even know they're subconsciously being biased into the stories. So it's like, it's like, dude, the media has learned that we are manipulative, manipulatory, manipulative, it, we are able to be manipulated. <laughs> we're, we're easily bought. Yeah. Easily bought. Yeah. And I, I, I actually see that a lot with influencers now too. 100%. If you just pick a direction. Oh, I'm seeing it. The loyalty you get. Oh, yeah. But the hate you get. Yeah. But, but the, the ones loyalty, in the middle, like we are. Me we too. We, we try to stay. I try to stay just out of it. But, you know, the ones that choose and go. They seem like they're growing a lot faster. A lot faster, bro. Yeah. So what it what yeah. it mean what it means is that seventy percent of everyone is not equal to fifty percent of one full side. So mm-hmm. it's like it's like, dude, it's like you you, Good point. you just can't get thirty five percent of this side and thirty five percent of this side to activate as maliciously unfortunately and aggressively as you can when you have 50 percent of the entire country all from the same mindset yeah and those are the people i i dislike the most those are the people i dislike the most the panderers are the people i i, I can't stand because they are driving the division mm. they 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 act like they are the truth tellers they act like they are the people that are telling the story that only they got but they're doing it for one fucking reason, dude. And that's to further divide so that they can make more money. Mm-hmm. And that's on both sides. They're building their team. That is on both sides. That yeah. is not a, a swing at the left or the right. Yeah. You see it happening on both sides. Everybody's saying, okay, I'm going to continue to do this. And I'm going to continue to do this. And, and them because I'm making money doing it, dude. And, and it's just sad, bro. It's really sad. It's really destructive, dude. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all buying views, right? It's like... And they've been doing it way before we were doing it. Way before yeah. YouTube was around. Way before, this has been from the beginning of time, old radio. You, the families would gather around the radio station. Like, it's been happening forever. But at one point, it was just more, it was, it was a little bit more it was innocent. It was, yeah. There was probably some good news. Today, you will be listening to the War of the Worlds. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, by aging, you know, like. It was innocent. It was innocent. Now it's just filthy. It's just bro. Everything, everything's disgusting. Bro. Disgusting, yeah. dude. Like, it was like, it was like. You know, you're you're you'd be just huddled around listening to the Cubs game. 
a score from Chicago. It was eight yeah. to six. The Cubs are leading the Cardinals. Yeah. You know, and then and then it became the scores eight to six. This episode is brought to you by Hummel's Hot Dogs. You know, <laughs> buy your Hummel's Hot Dogs. Then like 20 years later, it was like, you know, like the score is eight to six, and I'm here smoking a Marlboro, you know, here, and it, it just shit just continued to. Now That's it's just funny, like, dude. now That's it's so like, true. now it's like, you know, I'm here in Chicago, the score is eight to six. Fuck your neighbor if they voted for this person. Like, you're like, what the f? I'm just trying to watch the baseball game. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, dude, we just have devolved like so badly as a country. It's just. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. I, I hopefully, like you just said, I think there's a little bit of a pendulum swing. It I seems like it. like it. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. But I think, but I think like the you, pendulum keeps swinging and like it'll go one way or the other, but none of the ways are good. I think until we realize that the only pendulum swing that's going to really help us is like, is like, I don't know. It, it, everybody on both sides keeps talking shit about moderates. Like, no, 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 no. Like a moderate's an inactive. Like, no, no, no. Like you can't be in the middle of the aisle. Like that's, that means you're just getting nothing done. Dude, I, I have this analogy about our current two-party system. And this isn't even around hate or protest or any of that stuff. This is just simply around forward progress as a nation. Our two-party system is the same as two basketball teams playing against each other, neither of which team is trying to actually put points on the board they're simply just making sure that the other team doesn't score. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. The, like, bro, for four years, the Republicans are in control. The Democrats spend those four years blocking Republican bills. Then the Democrats take over, and for four years, the Republicans spend those four it's years blocking Democratic zone. bills. Yeah. That's it. Zero forward progress, more deficit, more hate, more division. That's the end. And, and by the way, the whole time, the crowd watching the game— is all trying to kill each other in the audience. <laughs> That's the country right now. That's bro, you're literally not wrong. how yeah. f is that? You're not bro? wrong, dude. That's a great analogy. Mm -hmm. No, we're not putting any points on the board. And you want to know what's crazy? At the arena down the street, the the ar arena where the Chinese play, they got 100 points on the board, and it's just one team playing. Yeah, right? Yeah. And the audience is all clapping. And they're looking for new teams to play. Exactly. <laughs> bro, I just yeah, had exactly, a vision of, like, bro. Nancy Pelosi just, like, trying to slam yeah, exactly. this ball, bro, and it just getting Blocked, smacked. bro. No shot, dude. Not today, dude. Good luck. It's wild, bro. No one wants to see any progress. They just want to fight. Everybody just wants to fight. You're, it's yeah, more by the way, it's at the expense of us. Yeah. It's at the expense of all of us. Because th this very small elite politician group. Illuminati. Bro, they're just, we're like pawns, dude. We're like pawns in this giant game and, and they're just in control of all of us. Like this tiny group controls the whole country. I've, I've seen a lot of evidence of it too. God. And by the way, it's the world. Yeah, it's I've world. gotten to see, it's I've gotten to meet some of the people, bro. I'm, I'm not kidding. And that's why I know it's real because yeah. I because I've been on these like, I don't want to say any like locations or like yeah. countries, but like I've been on these trips to like during like very specific time frames when like, oh, everybody's in this country during this time. Like, let's go here. Mm. And dude, you just ended up in these places where the wealth is so, it, it, it's so, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like I've watched six-year-olds spoon the highest grade caviar out of buckets with like keg cups. Like it was nothing, dude. Like these people, the, the wealth and power it is mind blowing, bro. And you meet people at these events and you're like, and they're like, oh, like I'm ex CIA. You're like, well, why are you here? Why the f are you here? You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, the, that shit re is real. It is. It real. really is real. And, yeah. and, and like, it's, it's wild. So, like, that's why to put a, a like, an end cap on it, as far as the conspiracy theory stuff is concerned, I'm not turned off to any of it. Yeah. I'm not, I don't say wrong. Yeah. Like, like, but some of it does make me laugh a little bit. Like it does, this, it does seem like more now than ever. A lot of them are coming true, like conspiracies in conspiracies in general. You want to know like why, Elon? You want, you want to know why? Yeah. Because if you call every single thing a conspiracy, the eventually chance some are gonna that be. some of those are conspiracies is much higher. Like back in the day, there was three conspiracy theories. We think there's aliens. Yeah. Maybe we didn't land on the moon and JFK got shot by the CIA. Yeah. Those were the three. All the other stuff, like when they were like, yo, um, 
hey, like, uh, we got a problem. There's a new, you know, there's AIDS. Like, maybe a couple people are like, that's not AIDS. That's a government cover up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like the majority of people are like, dude, don't get AIDS. That's bad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Or like, yo, there's cancer. Like so a couple people are like, dude, cancer is really like turning the frogs gay. You know what I'm saying? But like <laughs> the majority of people are like, dude, let's try not to get cancer. Now, like since every single thing that happens, someone is like, dude, that's totally a government conspiracy that when one or two of them turn out to be a little fishy. Yeah, of course someone was right. Somebody out there said it. Like, it's like, well, I think we've just lo quickly losing trust. We're losing trust in our government. We're losing trust of our social media. We're losing trust of now we've got AI coming, which is <laughs> that's the crazy. It's going to be impossible to trust anything you see. And it, how are you going to authenticate it? We've lost so much trust that it's easier to just say it's fake. Yeah. Or it's not true if you yeah. don't want to believe it. Right. And also, but, dude, like I'm going to be honest. If you look at a cross section of like conspiracy theorists, they always fit like a certain mold, dude. Like, like I hate to say this, but they're all just looking for something to belong to. Like mm -hmm. they, like the majority of them, they're not like these like elevated thinkers, like scientists and shit like that. They're usually like pretty like, you know, like despondent people who are like looking for a group to belong to. Like, dude, like, did you see that train crash in fucking Iowa? Like, clearly that was the Chinese. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, and by the way, maybe it was, <laughs> but like, yeah, we don't but know. like, I don't know. But like at the same time, like they generally fit into like a certain mold. Yeah. But damn, that mold has gotten a lot bigger lately. Cause there's a lot of people that like look at everything. They're like, dude, like I went to Wendy's the other day. They gave me five piece nugget instead of six. Like, <laughs> damn bro. Like where'd that other nugget go? <laughs> We are mainly asking questions ourselves because we don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I have dude, no idea what's going scroll on. Scroll Twitter for 30 minutes and you won't know what to do. No. You're like, uh. Elon Musk <laughs> is invading Ukraine, dude. What? Dude, what's yeah. going on here? The dude, Chinese yeah. balloons. And bro. with the AI coming, it's like you watched Elon Musk say it. Yes. Right? And it's like, well, yeah, here we go. Dude, there was one where he was like, <laughs> he was like, Logan Paul is such a douchebag, like steroid <laughs> addict. Like, bro, you can make uh, him say anything. It's bro. scary, bro. Imagine another two years, three years, four years. I don't know. I mean, hopefully we handle our hormone replacement right. We got that much time, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tank out. Imagine if all the men in our country were on testosterone. Like the a lot of them are. A lot, a lot more than yeah, a lot more than you think is is supplementing. Yeah, test. I mean. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get soft, bro. I don't want to get weak. I don't want to get. Uh, you know, I don't want to be hey, big Mike. Hey, big Mike. <laughs> I don't want to be oh hey, God. big Mike, bro. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to provide as a man. That's yeah, that's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm basically on fire from these lights. So. Yeah. So yeah. Let's wrap it up, dude. Yeah. That was fun, dude. I mean. <laughs> it's it's always, it's good seeing with you guys. I didn't know you know where it was gonna go, but I'm happy it went where it went, and it was a good time. I love you guys. Yeah, Thanks man, I had some things, but yeah. I like where it's at. I like where it's at. I don't want to get you too deep. want. I know you want to cover some beefy topics. No, I don't. Well, right. I, I like being the guy that just brings some better energy. Yeah, there. yeah, and that's right. smart. Let's smile. Save that for your pod. Smile bro. more. Keep going. Keep crushing it. I love you guys. Yeah, Thanks man. for having me on. Thanks for watching, guys. You're beautiful. You're one of a kind. Smile more. Nice. Thanks, brother. Dude, I started getting hot, bro, next I'm to these lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. Thanks, dude.